Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Welcome to FA 110 lecture series. This video is the second video in the uh, lecture series. Still, we are in a uh, topic of introduction to accounting part two. In order for accounting information become useful for decision makers, so the information should have the qualitative characteristics that would beneficial for the decision maker. Uh, Malaysian Accounting Standard Board has outlined there are fundamental qualitative characteristics and also uh, they are enhancing qualitative characteristics that should be embedded in accounting information. The fundamental qualitative characteristics, uh, the first one is relevance. The information should be, have a capability to make a difference in a decisions uh, in terms of predicting the future or confirming um, the past events that already occurred. The relevance is strongly related to materiality of that information, if it is significant or not to be uh, disclosed that accounting information. The second fundamental qualitative characteristics is a faithful representations, whereby all the information should be complete, none of missing items, and neutral, and also free from error. Neutral means that you do not have any biasness. Do not um, uh, the informations do not have um, influencing a certain people or a certain group of people, and of course the information should free from any error. The enhancing characteristic is comparability, whereby the accounting information should have the ability to be compared to prior years or can be compared with other firms. So you, you need to design or um, display the accounting information that should have this comparability characteristic. The second one is verifiability, means that the information has, has been verified by other experts. The timeliness means that um, the information available to decisions in time decision makers uh, to make that particular decisions. And the last one, enhancing qualitative characteristic is understandability, meaning that the information should be presented in the manner of users can comprehend, understand, what the information is all about. In accounting, there are certain blocks that you need to understand. But first of all, the ethics in financial reporting. We are human being. When we prepare the financial reports, there are some risks in us. The poten potentially risk um, for you to uh, have a bias in uh, writing up the report. There is a possibility misinterpretations or misrepresentations of the data, and sometimes there are ambiguity embedded in your data presented. So those risks is there. And it sometimes it's very difficult for you uh, to judge um, whether what you do is right or wrong. 
because that is ethics all about. Um, you should um, prepare um, the financial reports uh, uh, right, a true, honest, and fair. Um, however, those items, even though they are guidelines to for you to be honest, fair, and right or true, uh, the guidelines um, are judged by you as a human being. So it's very difficult actually to practice the ethics in uh, financial reporting. But uh, in my advice, should follow as uh, follow the Malaysian financial reporting standard as accurate as possible, uh, so that you should you would uh, avoid the potential of frits that I see. The second um, blocks of accounting is on the generally accepted accounting principles and also the accounting standards. The generally accepted accounting principles actually has been issued by financial uh, financial accounting standard board uh, that based in United States of America. Uh, however, Malaysia has also issued uh, um, reporting accounting uh, accounting reporting standard uh, financial reporting standards that they call Malaysian reporting standards, uh, which is issued and governed by Malaysian Accounting Standard Board. So you should Google them up and look into the websites of Malaysian Accounting Standard Board so that you should familiar how many standards that have been issued by the Malaysian Accounting Standard Board. Okay, the third block in accounting is in terms of measuring the measurement principles where these principles um, uh, lay out how you measure certain assets or liabilities um, or revenues or expenses, how you measure them. So in measurement principles, uh, later we will look into historical cost, objectivity, full disclosure, um, revenues, and also expenses recognitions. Um, the fourth block is on accounting concept conventions and assumptions. Uh, these are um, the uh, accounting concepts that we will uh, discuss later. So accounting convention basis and policies uh, were actually not much different among it. But when you say that accounting principles or concepts, it actually are rules that you, you should abide in ensure the um, you do not have the subjectivity and then um, usually the accounting principle or concept consists of conventions basis and policy considerations and the convention actually is an assumptions uh, general understanding or general accepted ideas by accountants or auditors and base or basis is a principles that would have would assist in recording process and measurement approach and the policy is actually adoptions of certain accounting method or basis and also a consistent applications of those method and the concept of true and fair view uh, that is applied so that your um, accounts accurately reflect the business activities so whenever we say that the mm, true and fair view means that it's you no know, um, we can assume it's free from error and free from biases and adopt certain concept and convention it will ensure uh, the accounting information is present accurately and also in a consistent basis. If we look into the accounting concepts, first of all, 
the, the, the most important one is economic entity concept. A certain book says that is business entity, uh, or certain books just write as entity concept. Uh, these entity concepts consider owner and business are separate entity. Uh, some people say that business is business, owner is owner. And the items recorded in the business books must reflect the business transactions only. Um, uh, for example, okay, the, the owner transfer his personal computer for business use means that okay, it's personal items, but then becomes business asset. So the business asset will be a property of the business means from business viewpoint and from owner's viewpoint uh, the computer that you give to the business as investment usually we say it as capital however when owner took money from business uh, so means that the asset of business have become lessened and the owner's investments investment um, also will be considered lesser. That's why we will now um, credit your assets and debit drawings. So this uh, will describe the economic entity concept. A separate owner and business, but this one is in accounting view. And the second concept is going concerns means that we assume business have indefinite life means that uh, business can be continued in the foreseeable future mm, unless there are evidence saying that it will be liquidated bankrupt in the near future but we assume it's a, a, a long-term um, continuations of that The third uh, concept that we will discuss is on the monetary concept. Well, some books say money measurements or stable dollar concepts. So these are saying that every recorded items or recorded transactions must be measured in terms of money. So in Malaysia, we use Ringgit Malaysia because that is the terms uh, that we record in accounting books in assuming that money is our common denominator in our records and the ringgit Malaysia that we choose is appropriate basis for any accounting measurement and also analysis we also assume that um, that Martin monetary units that you ringgit Malaysia is the most effective means to express to other parties um, uh, in terms of exchanging the goods and services and on and also they explain the changes in capital periodicity concept means that the economic activities can be divided into whether monthly quarterly or yearly and for reporting purposes normally in Malaysia we do yearly basis but some company do um, the reporting by quarterly however um, for management purposes sometimes the account information is being reported by monthly the accrual concepts um, means that income and expenses is recognized in the accounting period where they occur uh, regardless on the cash exchange for example when the income already earned but the money uh, has not been paid or received yet so we should recognize that accrued income as income for that particular period the same goes with the expenses because if they are incurred 
we should record them in that particular period even though we have not paid that expenses. The materiality concept says that any items will be considered material if it has significant effect upon the statement of profit or loss or statement of financial positions. Significant effect means that significantly uh, could influence the decision makers. So material is exercising your judgment. Normally, we do not have a specific rules for um, saying it is material. Example, waste bin. Tong sampah, huh? Uh, the waste bin, normally the value is not significant enough for us to consider as asset, a non-current asset. So we will record as expenses. However, if the value is significant, um, uh, for example, the uh, chemical company has chemical waste that need a special uh, waste bin, usually a special waste bin the, to store the chemical waste it is high in value. So we can say that it is significant enough to be considered as non-current asset. So we will record them in statement of financial positions. However, if the value is not significant enough to be considered an asset, but shareholders want it to be reported in the financial statements. For example, um, the recycling waste bin, uh, the shareholders want uh, the company to uh, portray that the company is committed in preserving the environment. So even though the value is not significant, we should uh, uh, record that particular information in the notes to the account. So you should explain in the notes to the account that the waste bin is actually a recycled um, waste bin, a recycling waste bin that uh, that we, uh, the company, is preserving the um, environment. The neutrality concepts uh, is saying that uh, it's free. Uh, the information should be free from any biasness because different users have different need of information. Uh, the financial information. For example, the owner would like to see um, a lot of profit so that it will um, uh, showing that it will have uh, more money in the future. Um, however, um, uh, if you show a, uh, a lot of profit, so the tax will be increased. So there are two different conflict interests there. However, you as accountant, when you want to um, display the financial information, you must be neutral and the financial information must free from any bias. Because when it's free from bias, then the data or the informi financial information can be reliable. So the user can rely on the information to make decisions. However, neutrality can be lost. Once we prepare in order to influence others uh, so that the um, users will make a decision that favorable to the company. For example, uh, the company appear have lots of cash, 
by selling its major asset just at the end of the accounting period. However, that particular financial report did not reveal that the asset is actually needed for them to uh, operate. So in the future, or probably the next accounting period, they need to buy that particular asset again. So actually, you do not have that much cash because the cash will be used for the next accounting period. But in the financial report, say that it shows that um they have uh, there are a lot of cash available uh, for the company. So th that is um it's not wrong. The data is not wrong. However, you miss mis, mis, mis representations of that particular information. You are being biased. Um, so the uh, neutrality is very important for you to understand when you want to do the. Uh, prepare the financial reports. The consistency means that the transactions or the valuation method should be uh, adopted the same way from year to year. For example, the inventory valuation method in 2000, uh, 2009, uh, 2019 is average method, um, weighted average. Uh, so, in 2020, the valuation must use the weighted average method again. You should not uh, change that particular method so that you become consistent. And uh, being consistent means that it will be meaningful for that financial performance can be compared from this year, from 2020, with 2019 because the method has been adopted are the same. However, it doesn't say that the, uh, the accounting policies or the method cannot be changed at all. It can be changed, but you need to have a justification why the policies have been changed and need to disclose in the notes to the accounts why you change and explain the impact of the change. This consistency concept is a very, very related with the comparability. Saying that uh, the comparison of financial performance from year to year and also comparison um, with other companies. So comparability concept, concept saying that can be compared through the years so that the users uh, can derive the meaningful decisions and also um, the comparability of financial statements should uh, uh, be um, compared with the years uh, through times or with other, uh, uh, other entities or other organizations with similar uh, to your company. Uh, in evaluating their performance or any uh, changes in the financial positions. Uh, uh, the example, the same as the consistency, why when you compute the positions within uh, the straight line or the balancing, reducing balance method, then it should be consistent for the next year with the value inventory. Uh, once it's not adopted, the consistent will um, uh, consistent method should be adopted for subsequent periods. The revenue recognitions, where Malaysian Accounting Standard Board framework. If you Google that, you will see that um, the articles, and you can read that. So it says that the income is recognized in statement of profit or loss when there is an increase 
in the future economic benefits relating increase of asset or decrease in liability and the income should be measured reliably instead you should measure in within the justifications and the recognition income usually uh, uh, recognize when the increase of asset or decrease in liability and sometimes the procedures is very difficult and delicate um, so the adopting the recognize the income uh, should look into whether you have a sufficient degree of certainty uh, well uh, um, sometimes we say that okay it's easy for the revenue recognition for example the sales of goods when you know the exchange of goods i mean the ownership of the goods uh, to the other parties from seller to the buyer uh, so we can recognize its revenue however um, um, there is a possibility we cannot recognize revenue um, when uh, the buyer place an order uh, with us with a big amount um, you should not recognize when the customer placing the orders because uh, you do not have the um, uh, sufficient certainty that the sales transaction will occur even though your customer is very related to you and he will have a strong relationship with the customer but still you cannot record the revenue first because we cannot recognize that revenue at the particular period at the order um, period we need to have the certainty that the sale transactions will occur then you will recognize the revenue um, the revenue recognition is very difficult uh, with dealing with contract um, uh, future contracts or um, a contract job uh, it's very difficult actually later on in the math courses you will um, learn how the revenue recognition is a very important for you to understand the same goes with the ex expenses recognitions whereby it says that it will be recognized in statement of profit or loss when there is a decrease in future economic benefits relating to the decrease in asset or increase in liability and also it should be measured reliably for example amortizations or depreciations so the economic benefits of that particular non-current asset are consumed or expired uh, so um, you as an accountant must have a systematic basis how you want to allocate that amortizations or depreciation within your rational basis so that that uh, has been measured reliably and can be recognized as expenses uh, sometimes your future economic benefits do not qualify or cease to qualify so your non-current asset should be um, disposed so that particular future economic benefits will be translate into uh, uh, and expenses to the organizations to the business and will be recorded um, uh, decreasing the uh, value of asset in statement of financial positions uh, another example is a liability incurred without the recognitions of asset for example uh, the liability of uh, under the product warranty has been arise so it can be 
um, recognized as expenses. Another principle um, for measurement is objectivity, meaning that any measurements and reports should be objective in terms uh, is in terms of uh, uh, factual and also the data is already verified means that you can verify the data and the data should be fact and when we say objective factual and verifiable meaning that all the data uh, accounting data that we include in our financial reports must be based on evidence and normally we call as source of documents you have a lot of business documents but which source of documents will be based as your evidence uh, to record that accounting data never ever rely on this sub subjective data even though you see that the subjective data is should be better to be reported but do not ever rely on that subjective data full disclosure this is another principles in measurements um, uh, accounting concepts where uh, all the uh, information should be reported in the financial statement or financial reports any significant amount because that significant information uh, um, is uh, available for the outsiders or the users to make an informed decisions about the company uh, if for example you missed out on uh, um, intentionally or unintentionally uh, missing out the information then the users may uh, make a different decisions so that's why um, that particular uh, information um, should be disclosed in your financial reports uh, the users should be know how well the company based on reading the financial reports or financial statements for example information of uh, a major loss has occurred uh, during the natural disaster uh, for this year for example a major loss that has been occurred during the um, movement control order so those particular information should be reported in the financial reports and also the changing the accounting methods from last year or previous year also any information on pending litigation the court case or probably the company is being summoned uh, for wrongdoing also uh, the case are still in court uh, still in the, um, do not have the result from the court whether you are guilty or not so you should reveal that particular litigations uh, what the loss could be if they lost the case another measurements uh, in that uh, measurement principles is that historical cost because normally we uh, measure our liabilities and assets and uh, revenue uh, at cost means that when they occur we have evidence that the cost or the money has been spent on that asset or liabilities so usually we use historical cost because it can be definite and determinable it's easy you will have the evidence um, uh, and normally the cost using the cash or cash equivalent however the cost concept 
uh, not necessarily in terms of historical cost. We also have current cost or fair value. We call it as fair value. So the asset is, um, even though we have been paid uh, using historical cost, but the value has been arise. So you should um, value that particular asset using the fair value amount. And also some of the liabilities uh, has has um, has discounting uh, discounting amount so that the cash and the cash equivalent should be reduced and some of uh, uh, liabilities of asset are valued at present value because they have an influencing the uh, discounting value in the future. Um, and also the cost co another cost concept that could be adopted in financial reporting is net realizable value whereby uh, can be obtained um, in assuming uh, what are the selling um, price of that particular asset. Mm. Why do we have, why do we need the accounting standards anyway? Um, actually, we should have standards because it could guide us for a uniform financial statement so that different types of users, different users have the same uh, um, interpretations of that financial statements and it could reduce the variations of financial reporting among the business entities uh, so that when the variations is reduced then it can be compared from one business to another and also accounting standards is to show the true and fair view of an organization's uh, reports. Uh, the true and fair view is, um, we can say that uh, the reports, the accounting information display in the financial statements is accurately representing the current states of that organization's well-being. Okay. That is the end of the lectures. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.